Hello and welcome to PCB Chat. I'm your host, Mike Buto. Today's podcast is sponsored by PCB Update, the free digital newsletter for the printed circuit industry. Visit the website at pcbupdate.com to subscribe. Our guest today is Brad Griffin. Brad, as you may know, is Product Management Group Director at Cadence, where he has spent about 18 years working on software for high-speed and physical design solutions for PCBs and IC packages. He's been a member of the EDA industry since 1990. Welcome back to PCB Chat, Brad. Hey, Mike, you make me sound old. Thanks for welcoming me back, though. <laughs> hey, we joined the industry at the same time. Okay, okay so I'm right here good. with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been about 18 months since you last joined us here on the podcast. As we've discussed before, a big problem circuit board designers and engineers are running into is data speeds and volumes that are really, really demanding. Data centers, of course, um, automotive, especially with all the onboard systems competing for bandwidth, uh, and with IoT and 5G emerging. As an aside, my latest phone actually shows the 5G symbol from time to time, and I've mm-hmm. got to admit, I get a little excited when I see that thing <laughs> pop up. You know, I immediately do a speed test when I see it. There you go. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, um, there's just a lot of applications now that require higher volumes. System level SI and PI and you know, how people are modeling those various pieces of interconnect that are required to simulate those systems is really what we're going to talk about today. And Cadence is now bringing out the latest uh, version of its Clarity 3D Transient Solver. And so, Brad, I'm going to kind of turn it over to you and just let's talk about the product and what has Cadence done with this latest revision? Thanks, Mike. And you're exactly right. The uh, industry does not go slower and they do not add less complexity to their products. And so the challenges around signal integrity, power integrity persist. And uh, there's there, there's actually another element to it. I think this new entry into the, the uh, Clarity product line, the Clarity 3D Transient Solver is, is really primed to support. And that's the issue of electromagnetic interference or EMI. Uh, all of our signal integrity and power integrity challenges have an impact on EMI, right? If we don't if we don't provide PCBs with good signal integrity, if there's noise, if there's ringing on our lines, all of that generates a certain amount of emissions that can potentially cause us to fail uh, the government or the you know the standards body testing for EMI. So there's FCC, there's CE, there's CISPR, there's a number of different uh, standards bodies that we have to go through to to with any product to get through the EMI testing. And this really requires a system level simulation. So while we've done, a, I believe, a really good job at supporting the signal integrity and the power integrity challenges over the years, when it comes to looking at you know PCBs or multiple PCBs and enclosures and how those different uh, you know boxes, if you will, interact with each other in a larger system, that's been a bit much bigger uh, challenge to simulate. And uh, honestly, most companies just build prototypes and take those uh, systems into um, you know, into test facility chambers and perform measurements. So, so the the simulation challenge has has been a, a building one over time, and it just gets very expensive to address this EMI system level simulation. And that's what we believe we've done with the Clarity 3D Transient Solver, is we're providing a simulation alternative to building prototypes. So you take your design, you run it through the simulation. And you realize, okay, I've got noise here. I've got, you know, I've got issues there. How tied in is that to the actual CAD tool? In other words, is it intelligent enough to then go back and make changes within your your CAD uh, ecosystem, or is that really up to the designer and the uh, the hardware engineer, the the SIPI guys to to kind of do all the trade-offs in terms of, you know, do I need to move these parts farther apart? And, you know, what is that going to, what impact is that going to have on the rest of the form factor and so on? Yeah, I mean, another great question, Mike. I, I think that everybody wants this simulation nirvana where you're designing things and you're getting your simulation results immediately. And I, I believe we're certainly moving closer to that. But at this point in time, um, they're really different products, 
but they're products that have very tight links to each other, right? So while you're designing a printed circuit board in um, you know the Allegro PCB design environment, um, we, we're able to be able to take that data from the Allegro native file format, the BRD file format, bring it right into the Clarity environment. And it's there that we would probably do things like add the enclosure, add cables, um, potentially can pay, take that uh, design and connect it into a larger enclosure that would have other systems, uh, other you know subsystems available. That's the sort of thing that we're, we're bringing to the table to form this large scale simulation. Now, when you perform that simulation, you can find out where the source of the noise comes from. And if it turns out the source, the source of the noise comes from your PCB design, you'll be able to guide the PCB designer as to exactly where we need to go to change this. Maybe it means that we need to move traces um, in from the edge of the board so we don't have as much emissions. And so that you'll be able to guide that designer and provide a what I would call a seamless uh, a seamless redesign. So a seamless um, a edit to the design. So you can simulate that, bring that new, that edited version back into the simulation environment from your simulations. So you're creating a, a, a much more efficient uh, design, simulate, find a problem, fix the problem and re-simulate. And, and what you really need to, to take into consideration is right now the default methodology to looking at these large system level simulations is or system level um, testing it's not simulation it's really more build all this as a prototype go into an expensive test environment test it and make sure that it works before you bring it to the government for the final uh, sign off so we're, we're we're really helping our customers eliminate or re greatly reduce the number of prototypes that they would have to build to be able to ensure that they can get through this final uh, EMI testing regulations. And while my mind is typically kind of oriented towards boards and you know components that are soldered on top of them, what Clarity does, it's looking at all the interconnects, including like the connectors and things like that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that's the nice thing about the Clarity environment. It reads the eCAD data, the electrical CAD data from Allegro. You can read it from other design tools as well. There's just a much tighter integration with Allegro. And then you can bring data that comes in from other systems like mechanical CAD design systems for where you might bring in connector data. Uh, you can bring in uh, data that's associated with cables. You can have a backplane uh, and bring that data in as well. So there's there it's it's really kind of um, a, a system simulation tool. We wouldn't do any mechanical CAD design, but we can bring in the data from that mechanical CAD environment, merge the, the different pieces together so that you're really simulating a full system. And, and you know, the, the good news for us that are involved in, in ECAD is that quite often the source of the problem can be traced back to electrical CAD where we can find that problem, we can fix it, and then we can re-simulate it. And I, I do want to point out that we provide a number of different ways to screen the designs ahead of time. You know, there's there, we have ways to look for impedance discontinuities where you might be routing traces under uh, over gaps. And again, there's rules that are in place to check to make sure that you don't put high speed traces too close to the edge of the board. But when you're looking at a full system, these things can add up and these things add up and, and that's what potentially causes you to fail an EMI test. Everybody always goes into these testing environments with their fingers crossed. Well, when you can do a real full system simulation, you can actually have a higher level of confidence that you're going to actually pass even if you do go into the test chamber once, you know, with you, when you're renting test equipment, renting test chamber, you, you can you can go in with confidence. It'll be a one and only time that you need to do your own testing pre-compliance, so that when you go to the true um, standards body testing, you're gonna you know you're gonna pass. My understanding is that Clarity, the the latest Rev, works quite a bit faster than some of the legacy 3D field solvers. Yeah, the key here is, and this is the same general message that I had when we spoke about the Clarity 3D FEM solver is that these tools are built in the era of the multi-core computer, 
right? So many of the tools, including some of the legacy tools that we have at Cadence, have been designed in the era of a single core computer. So adding the scalability to be able to look at a problem and 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 leverage the, the the computing resources that are available to leverage that efficiently is just something that's part of the Clarity 3D product line DNA. And so now that we're using a, a different numerical method, the finite difference time domain method or FDTD, which is really um, sort of geared towards these large problems. It's much more memory efficient. It's much it, it's, its ability to scale across a large system is going to make it very effective for looking at these large problems. And then when you add the scalability of adding multiple cores, um, it wouldn't surprise me to see people doing 256 cores, 512 cores to simulate these large systems. And they're going to see the benefit, the capacity, nearly linear scalability as they add these additional cores into the simulations. And so if you really think about it, if, if you'd be looking at a problem that you would try to solve on a, a 32 core computer and you know maybe maybe you could get that simulation done in in 10 days you know that all of a sudden you would bump that up to 320 cores you now you're going to get that simulation done in one day so that's a significant difference you know from the way legacy tools have worked just because they're not really the underlying architecture is just not built with the idea of understanding that you need to be able to distribute the problem across multiple CPUs you know if basically efficiently. Uh, you know, one more thing I'll just point out is we, we quite often see that our customers that are trying to do this with legacy tools, they'll need, let's just say they could run it on on one machine that's got a terabyte of memory and, and 32 cores. When they go to distribute that, they have to get multiple computers that look the same. So they all have to have one terabyte, and 32 cores, one terabyte and 32 cores. That can get very expensive. Where the way the Clarity technology is architected, it'll just take any computer that's available. You know, if it's got six cores, 12 cores, 32 cores, 128 cores, it'll use all those different systems and 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 efficiently utilize whatever memory whatever memory is available in those machines to get the job done. It's going to soak up all the capacity that you have available to get the job done as quickly as as possible without charging you an arm and a leg to provide those computing resources. So it's it's nice for our customers to have tools that are architected in this day of the multi-core computer. Brad, with devices getting, well, I don't, I don't know that smaller is the right word, uh, especially if, if you look at some of the phones coming out today, mm -hmm. but, but maybe more compact in terms of how much technology is being packed into a given form factor. You know, we see this trend toward more active flex circuits, uh, which I'm characterizing as flex with parts on it, mm -hmm. um, plus high-speed connectors and so forth. What issues do these present for getting accurate simulation results? Yeah, this is, um, this is something that we're seeing more and more of our customers validate the fact that the Allegro solution, which is so good at doing rigid flex designs, understanding the multiple um, stackups that are part of that design environment, and then being able to pass that information to the simulation tool so that um, all that detail is available, it doesn't have to be re-entered. And that includes the bend information, right? Because when you bend the design, that's going to actually change the physical electrical properties. You're going to have the cable bending back on itself, and that's going to cause you know a certain amount of we'll call it crosstalk, if you will, between signals that wouldn't be crosstalking with each other when they were laid flat. So um, being able to uh, simulate this full rigid flex system in its, I guess, call it flexed environment, right? So that all, everything's bent is really a key thing because ultimately when you bring this to your emissions, uh, your your FCC testing or CISPR testing for EMI compliance, it's not going to be laid flat. It's going to be in this, uh, you know, bent environment. So simulating in that flexed environment, in that uh, enclosure that's going to fit in, that's, that's a key piece of being able to provide electrical 
that validity to your simulation. I think this applies to a number of different industries. You know, clearly the automotive industry is having to deal with some of this. Consumer electronics, no doubt about it. Uh, healthcare, many different monitoring systems. Rigid Flex is everywhere. And those challenges with being able to simulate that in its flexed condition and its true native living condition, I think is something that uh, we're really thrilled that we can bring the combined Allegro Clarity solution to be able to support that. Is simulation typically performed sequentially, board by board, interconnect by interconnect, or can Clarity work on all the interconnects in parallel? Well, I mean, it's certainly capable of it, no doubt about it. I just actually watched a presentation from a customer recently where they had a 10 board system and they they actually preached the, uh, this was for actually n- not for clarity, this was for a uh, um, IR drop analysis across multiple PCBs. And they really preached the idea that it makes sense to simulate it board by board to be able to catch any problems locally on on the individual boards as as you're as you're building them so i wouldn't want to discourage any customer from you know following a you know a i guess a very thorough simulation strategy to catch you know as many problems as early as they can on individual boards but i think Mike, what's important is ultimately you want to be able to simulate the whole thing so you can sign off on the system. So if you're talking about something that's, you know, for, you know, the mill aero environment where you're going to be doing something in a satellite or whatever the, the where that's going to live, you, you need to see it in its actual working state and simulate that because there's a, it's just mission critical, if you will, that the simulation represent the way that the system is meant to work. And so, yes, with Clarity, you can actually take all the various different interconnects, put them in together in a, into a single sim- simulation if, if you'd like. We have other techniques where you can actually build a topology, if you will, and, and you can um, <clears throat> simulate them you know, with S parameters cascaded across the different uh, environments for being able to, to do a full system, say signal integrity or power integrity simulation. But ultimately, I think for Clarity 3D Transient Solver, we're going to want to bring all that data into the Clarity 3D environment, and we're going to want to simulate it as a full system for for electromagnetic interference, because we want to look at not only what is the noise that's emitting from the various different PCBs, but we also want to be able to see how susceptible that any different PCB is to noise coming from another design. And so this is another means that says they need to all be simulated together to be able to provide that level of analysis for our customers. And remember, I'm not a designer. My knowledge of design comes from the folks that are actually sitting there, you know, weighing out the boards. So I, I listen to their stories and sometimes those are horror stories. And, <laughs> you know, in some cases they talk about how it takes as long or longer to to do the all the testing as it did to actually lay out the board. And part of that is, you know, they could spend a week in the lab running everything through all the test chambers and so on. This was a little bit of a an aside, but a company that Cadence recently acquired, Inspectar, has come up with some technology for trying to speed up the whole process on keeping engineers from getting completely bogged down in the in the lab. But my understanding is that Clarity 3D Transient Solver can help move some of that simulation up front and get it out of that the back end test chamber area. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, I mean absolutely. And and by the way, I love that inspect our technology. I think it's just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> you basically could just look at your design and all that data gets, you know, through virtual reality or augmented reality be able to display that uh, um that's just uh, that's just too cool. Um but yeah, from a simulation perspective, uh what what we're really trying to guide our customers towards is a more um, compact design cycle because we realize that every time you take a design in for a prototype design in for testing and you find a problem basically only unless there's some way to fix it by you know wrapping a cord or something like that you know with to, to reduce the emissions it probably means taking that design back to the to the CAD EDA tool and making some kind of change to the either the the physical design for electrical or potentially maybe even a change to the mechanical. Maybe you need to 
reduce the number of holes in a uh, enclosure or something like that. But ultimately, there's a design change that's going to have to take place. And that means another prototype to be able to validate that you're actually going to pass your results. So we we absolutely want to help our customers make that prototype cycle minimized. I mean, ideally, it would be zero. I think probably most customers will probably still at least build one, take it in and 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 validate that you know they're they're going to pass when they go to the um, government compliance testing because nobody wants to you know have that sort of uh, embarrassing moment where they're standing there with fingers crossed and they find out they didn't pass and they got to figure out where, what are they going to do now you know that that's just going to impact all the the whole production cycle downstream so everybody's trying to 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 make sure they do pass when they do when they do the compliance testing and doing it in, in a compliance chamber today in a test chamber with the pre-compliance test that's the accepted method but it's time consuming it's expensive simulation is just it's worth it it's worth it to spend the time up front provide you know connect all these things together into a simulation environment and get those results and so while I think you know the inspector stuff is great and it helps you figure out where's the source of the problem, that's when you've built a prototype. Our Clarity 3D Transient Solver is before you've built a prototype. Edit the design, fix it, get yourself to a point when you do build your prototype, it's going to work. That's a, a great distinction. Clarity 3D Transient Solver is about finding noise. How does it deduce or measure that noise? If I understand your question, what you're what you're asking me is that there's certain limits that the FCC is going to have, and it's you know if you look at a CISPR diagram, it's going to show at certain frequencies the amount of um, noise that's being emitted. I think it's measured in dB per micrometer, something along those lines. That's what the is basically being received by the antenna that's being used in that test chamber environment, right? So the, you've, you've got the source of the noise, which is coming from the system, and you've got the antenna that receives that noise. And that's what the the FCC testing looks like across the large frequency range. And again, different products like hospital or, or medical equipment might have more strict uh, regulations than other types of equipment. Automotive is going to have very strict regulations. So what the measurement is that's being taken in a lab is from an antenna with the source being the product that you're trying to take to market. So for us to be able to simulate that effectively, we need to set up the same type of environment where we've got an antenna. So we basically, you know, say here's the antenna that's being used in this type of compliance check. And then we've got the system all in what I would call a combination of electrical and mechanical data to be able to provide effectively what's going to happen when you turn that system on in the chamber and produce the noise that's going to be measured by the antenna. We do the same thing in simulation. Basically, we just we, we excite the the system. The system then you know create you know, all the emissions that are that are caused by that are are formed as, as far as simulation. You can actually visualize that with the Clarity 3D Transient Solver. And then that noise that gets emitted to the antenna is captured in the antenna model. And that's what you see as your results uh, in the Clarity 3D Transient Solver. So it's it's literally mimicking what's happening when you test. That That's the reason why we can give results that are basically test measurement accurate if it's not accurate, then you haven't given us good data. Good data will provide us, will allow us to provide you good results. Thanks, Brad. And when can we expect the release? Uh, the announcement's been made. When are you shipping? Yeah, I think the Clarity 3 Transient Solver is um, still being beta tested by a number of our customers. We're seeing great results. We're just uh, locking up a few things as far as uh, getting some infrastructure in place. The plan for the actual formal release is uh, is Q1 2021. We, you can look for it uh, available in your Cadence price list uh, very soon. Great. Well, my guest today has been Brad Griffin of Cadence. Thank you, Brad, for coming on PCB Chat. My pleasure, Mike. It's always a joy to talk to you, even if we are getting kind of old. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and on that note, I'd like to remind listeners that today's podcast has been sponsored by PCB Update, the free digital newsletter for the printed circuit industry. Visit the website at pcbupdate.com to subscribe. This has been Mike Buto for PCB Chat. Have a nice day. Hey.